just as when the night is about to end. It is the darkest hour of the night. Similarly, man's history is going to end now and this is the darkest hour of history. History continues only as long as you have chance events. For history to be told, you must have unpredictability, right? Can there be history if everything is predictable? If everything is predictable, then you can have at most a milometer, a dashboard. You cannot have history. Man's utmost control, man's absolute autocracy over existence is soon going to end history itself. After that, it would be man and man's desire. And history is about to end and this is the darkest hour of history. It would be very difficult to fight anybody. The evil lurks everywhere. All around you, within you, and everybody is evil. There are no quantum separations. When you look at the Kurukshetra, you see a definite differentiation, don't you? What is the definite differentiation? On one side, you have Duryodhan and the, on the other side you have Arjun. There is a very clear distinction and so Krishna knows whom to fight. Now Krishna has the luxury to afford sides. A battle is on and Krishna looks at the battle and Krishna knows. I can pick one of the two. I can afford that choice. Today you cannot afford that choice. There is only Duryodhan. He won the Mahabharat long back. There is Duryodhan one Dur fighting Duryodhan too. What does Krishna do? Whom does Krishna support? And if Krishna appears in Kurukshetra, Duryodhan one and Duryodhan two would tie up and chase away Krishna. Malaria is out. Polio is out. <laughs> Caste system is on its way out. Untouchability is out. Racism is out. Misogyny will be out. What are you going to fight next? All that could have been fought. Will be fought and defeated. These are old and petty evils. Petty evils. Somebody said, why do you want to turn somebody into an enemy? Why do you want to alienate someone if you can turn him into your customer? And desire only needs customers. I want this and I am willing to pay the price. If in today's world, untouchability is disappearing, it is not because people are discovering that at the core all are one. It is not because people are discovering that body and body are just the same. If in today's age, untouchability is discovering, it is because is, is disappearing, it is because of desire. If you come across a woman who is hugely gorgeous, 
would you want to not touch her because she belongs to an untouchable caste ah, no no that's too mean and you are a liberal would you allow your liberal instincts to forcinate be defeated please understand hmm? you are the recruiter in some firm and you want someone who can be productive because desire is related to productivity you want more and more to consume and you get a candidate you get a candidate who comes from an untouchable caste would you reject him no why should you you would welcome him and embrace him you are not embracing him out of love you are not embracing him because you have suddenly discovered fraternity you are embracing him out of desire greed usefulness so these social evils that you have mentioned here are petty little things that desire will throw out of the window are you getting it the great evil would be man himself man the god you see look at the age in which untouchability flourished that was also the age in which sexuality was repressed was it not the moment you set sexuality off the moment you say sexuality is all right untouchability cannot survive for more than 10 20 years desire has defeated all social evils it is not social reform movements that have defeated desire when the train and the bus came about when public transport came about in india hmm 100 150 years back that was a great step towards the eradication of untouchability the shudra would be sitting beside the brahmin in the railway coach because both desired to reach their destination and there was no option but to use the railways and the railways didn't have separate coaches for separate castes <laughs> desire defeats all the petty evils desire is the great evil that defeats all the petty evils for the sake of desire you can shake hands with your worst enemy don't you see that happening every day in politics in national politics in geopolitics everywhere you know what ended the cold war the desire of the little soviet republics to have a more economically prosperous life desire defeated the ussr it was not the usa that defeated the ussr it was desire desire will defeat all the petty evils 
the cold war was defeated not one side was defeated the entire war was defeated hmm hindu and a muslim are fighting you don't need to teach them the essence of religion just dangle some money in both in front of both of them they will forget fighting they both will run towards the money so you see all the religious discord has been taken care of and you don't need a great reformer or guru for that all you need is some money you don't have religious communal riots in metros anymore do you have them hmm the last big one that we had was in bombay in 1992 close to 3 decades now in smaller cities in suburbs rural areas that's where you have communal problems why because money is the greatest anti riot force why riot with someone if you can consume him if a hindu can use a muslim to make more money should he kill the muslim if the muslim can use the hindu for some personal pleasure should he kill the hindu not at all the day india and pakistan are linked through thick and heavy trade they'll find it very difficult to fight among themselves because now the interests of traders on both sides will be at stake they cannot fight anymore you see desire has taken out war the curse of war has been defeated by desire that's such a great thing but who will defeat desire now <laughs> who will defeat desire <laughs>